All right, guys, welcome to section 8.4, Rational Expressions. So throughout this Algebra 2 course, we've seen where we've introduced functions, graphed these functions, and then performed operations with these different functions. Well, we're going to be talking about rational expressions. Um, and what we're going to do is we've already talked about graphing. Okay, and now we're going to be looking at uh, operations with those functions. So we're going to st actually start with multiplication and division with rational expressions because it's actually a little bit easier than adding or subtracting, much like when we talk about with fractions, okay? It's easier to multiply and divide than it is to add or subtract. So the essential understanding here is that we can use what we know about adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing fractions to assist us with simplifying these rational expressions. Simplest form, simply means that when the numerator and denominator have no other common divisors. Okay, so I put a couple of examples up here. So we look at x plus 1 over x minus 1. Okay, there's nothing common, even though they're the same, it looks like the same term with different signs, they're not common. And also with this polynomial here. Okay, you can factor this down, but the factors of x squared plus 3x plus 2 don't include x plus 3. There's nothing common here. However, when you go over to the next part, x squared over x can be simplified. And here we could actually simplify and get rid of the x minus 3. That would become 1. So that would not be in simplest form. Okay? So what we're going to do in the next three or four examples is we're going to look at how to simplify rational expressions. And we're going to start with multiplication. So, example one, simplify x squared plus 7x plus 10 over x squared minus 3x minus 10. Anytime you multiply or divide, I would strongly suggest you always try to factor first. Factor the quadratics in this case. So here's my numerator and denominator, and I factor them. Two numbers that multiply to be 10 and add to be 7 are 5 and 2. Two numbers that multiply to be negative 10 and add to be negative 3 are minus 5 and plus 2. So then I look and say, well, is there anything common? There is. So this is not in simplest form. I see the x plus 2 and the x plus 2. They would become 1. I have x plus 5 and x minus 5, nothing common. So that is actually my final answer. That is this uh, polynomial, a rational expression, excuse me, in simplest form. Now, the big thing you have to notice here is that you have to note any restrictions. In order for this to equal this, you have to keep the same do domain restrictions because if you don't, then how can you say these two functions match or, or, or are equivalent? They have to have the same domain restrictions. So even though I see 5 and negative 2 won't work here, we'd have vertical asymptotes, I don't see the plus 2 here. I removed it, or the, the, excuse me, I've removed the minus 2. So, x can't equal 5, x can't equal negative 2. You still have to note all your restrictions back from the original factored form. Okay, so in example 2, we're going to find the product. Okay, we're going to multiply two rational expressions out. Here are my two rational expressions. The first thing you note here is that I'm going to try to factor all of this, and there's a lot going on. So what I suggest is look at one fraction, one rational exponent at a time, or a rational expression at a time, and then try to factor numerator, denominator, and numerator and denominator. So I look here, okay, I rewrite my problem, two numbers that multiply to be negative 6 and add to be 1 are 3 and negative 2. x minus 5 can't be simplified. This, x squared minus 25, is the difference of two squares pattern, x plus 5, x minus 5. And two numbers that multiply to be 3 and add to be 4 are 3 and 1. So again, now we look for common terms, common divisors. So I look and I see x plus 3 here, and x plus 3 here. I see x minus 5, and I see x minus 5. So I'm left with x minus 2 times x plus 5 all divided by x plus 1 and here's that problem. Now you can leave it as is or you can choose to multiply that numerator out and if you multiply the numerator out x minus 2 times the quantity x plus 5 
you get x squared plus 3x minus 10 all over x plus 1. And again, don't forget all the restrictions. Here, x can't be 5, x can't be negative 3, x can't be negative 1. And so I note my restrictions down here in red. So that's the key. Again, factor, then simplify. Once you have nothing in common, no common divisors, you know you've gone far enough with these rational expressions. And please remember to note any restrictions that we have for the domain. All right, example three. What is the quotient of these two rational expressions? So we've multiplied, now we're going to divide. So uh, when we divide fractions, we always flip the second fraction and multiply. So we multiply by the reciprocal. So dividing by this rational expression is the same thing as multiplying. And notice how we flipped this second fraction. So we apply the same rule we do for fractions to these rational expressions. Okay? So I rewrite my first fraction times the reciprocal or the inverse of that second fraction or rational expression. Then we do what we do before. We factor if possible. I can't do anything with the 2 minus x, but the de but denominator here is a perfect square, x plus 1 squared. Here we have a difference of two squares pattern. So x squared minus 1 becomes x plus 1, x minus 1. We have x plus 5 and x minus 2 for this denominator. And we saw this one, I believe, before. Two numbers that multiply to be negative 10 and add to be 3 are 5 and negative 2. Okay, so now I factored. I can see that one of these plus 1s will factor out with one of these plus 1s. So actually we'll get rid of that power and that become 1. Now, you see x minus 2 and 2 minus x. They may look the same, but the signs are different. Notice how the subtraction is with x here the subtractions with 2 here. I'm going to factor out a negative here, and that's very important. By factoring out a negative 1, I switch the signs. So minus x becomes positive x, 2 becomes subtraction of 2. And so now I can simplify that out. I can take the x minus 2 and the x minus 2. Okay, and it seems like I we can go ahead and do that. Sorry, I did that up here. So we got that. We've got everything simplified. So um, the subtraction or the opposite of x minus 1 goes here. And x plus 1 and x plus 5 go here. Remember, we simplified the x plus 1 out. I did that up here a little too early. So just be aware of that. I just went back down here and did the same simplification as I did in the step above. Okay, so subtraction or the opposite of x minus 1 in the numerator, x plus 1 times x plus 5, that's fine, leave it. You do not have to redistribute the subtraction sign, or the, excuse me, the negative sign. And note all your restrictions like we did before. Negative 5, 2, negative 1, and I think we've got all of them. x cannot be equal to negative 1, can't be equal to negative 5, can't be equal to uh, 2. So those are all the restrictions. And... So that's uh, dividing two rational expressions. Just flip the second rational expression and multiply. The last example involves, uh, we can say, complex numbers. Uh, normally a complex fraction has a, at least one fraction in the numerator and in the denominator. But we're going to look at this, and this is a polynomial divided by a, another set of polynomials. So one fraction divided by another. Now, just read this like you would any normal fraction. x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 9 divided by this whole polynomial. So that's what I did. I just rewrote this so it's a little bit easier to look at. Okay, that's a lot going on here. So I rewrite this, this fraction divided by this fraction. Or you could say this rational expression divided by this rational expression is right here. Well, that's just like example three. So what we're going to do is flip the second rational expression and multiply. And that's what I do. You can see here that in blue. Once I do that, I factor. Now in this second step here, notice these are both differences of two squares. So I went ahead and factored 
multiplied by the reciprocal of that second rational expression. So once I have that, you know the drill. You factor, and then you look to see any common divisors. So now it's the cancellation game. Plus 3, plus 3, okay? And it looks like I don't see... Do I see anything else here? I don't believe... Well, this should be x plus 4, x minus... Here we go, x minus 1. I made a little mistake there, and that's okay. So we have x minus 1, x minus 1 is gone, and I think that's it. Okay, so I just, a little bit of a mess up with the factoring. So it would be two numbers that multiply to be negative 4 and add to be 3, or plus 4 and minus 1. It happens to all mathematicians, so we cross out what we need to. x plus 1 times x plus 5 is here. x minus 3 times x plus 4 here. Nothing in common, no common divisor, so you know you're in simplest form. Again, we've got to know all the restrictions, so x cannot equal plus or minus 3. Uh, x cannot equal minus 4, okay? And x cannot equal 1 because of this guy right here, okay? So, we've simplified this complex rational expression by rewriting the expression just by reading and translating into something more manageable we can look at. We do have division, so we flip the second rational expression and multiply factor, cancel out common terms, and that's really the name of the game in simplifying rational expressions. Factor, okay, take out all common divisors, note any restrictions, and you should be okay. I hope this helps, and we'll see you for the next lecture.